Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So earlier you had two lectures on uh, Brahma Sputta Siddhanta of Brahma Gupta. So now is the third part which primarily deals with algebra. So in Brahma Gupta's Brahma Sputta Siddhanta which is a voluminous work, the 18th chapter is called Kuttakara Dhyaya. So we saw about Kuttaka also discussed by Aryabhata. So, Brahma Gupta starts this chapter which contains almost 100 plus verses with the Kuttaka algorithm. Uh, we will briefly present that Kuttaka algorithm and then after making some observations, we will proceed with uh, what, is no, what is known as Dhanarna Shunya Sankalanam. So, Dhana means a positive quantity, Rina means a negative quantity, Shunya is 0. So, operations with positive, negative and 0. So, this has been discussed in great detail by Brahma Gupta. And then we will also discuss Brahma Gupta's method for dealing with certs. So, cert as you know is a square root of a non-square number and we will discuss ekavarna samikaranam and anekavarna samikaranam. So, varna here refers to an algebraic quantity say x. So, a kavarna, so you have equations uh, on both sides, so with one unknown, so, so how do we equate them and solve them. So, he gives a general approach and then discusses a few examples. So, ane kavarna, so is many unknowns, so how do we handle equations with many unknowns and uh, bhavita refers to the product of two unknowns and uh, he also discusses approach by which you will be able to solve. See what is more interesting is to note that Brahma Gupta gives a general procedure. See algebra was not developed. So, we are talking about 6th, 7th century and uh, of course, this is a very important problem. So, Varga Prakriti and Bhavana principle. Varga Prakriti is basically a second order indeterminate equation and uh, Brahma Gupta gives a very important principle called Bhavana principle and uh, this has uh, various applications. It will also be dealt with by Professor Srinivas and then we will have a couple of examples. So, he starts this chapter with uh, this shloka giving the importance of kuttakara. So, prayena yatav prashnaha kuttakara drite nasakyante jnyatum vakshyami tatah kuttakaram saha prashnaihi. So, in fact, he gives the kuttakara algorithm and then uh, about 20-25 verses. So, giving various kinds of problems with various examples from uh, drawn from different disciplines. So, kuttakara drite means without kuttakara nasakyante. So, it is almost impossible to handle equations uh, with unknowns and therefore, he says I describe this kuttakara sahaprasnaihi with various illustrations. So, he says kuttaka karnadhana avyakta madhyaharana ekavarna bhavitakaihi Acharyaha Tantravidam Nyataihi Varga Prakriti Acha. So, this verse basically summarizes the various topics that he is going to discuss in this particular chapter, which is called Kuttakara Dhyaya. So, Kuttaka refers to uh, the first order indeterminate equation, and then uh, as I was mentioning, so Kharna Dhanena. So, Kha is 0, Rina is negative, Dhana is positive, so operations with all that, Avyakta Sankalana. So, Madhya Maharana is basically uh, an equation, quadratic equation and uh, how do we find uh, Madhya Ma is the middle term. So, the coefficient of x and the x, both are e referred to as Madhya Ma that depends on the context and we have to figure out the meaning. Ekavarna Samikarana, Bhavita and uh, Varga Prakriti, these are the various topics discussed in this chapter called Kuttakara. To very quickly recall, uh, so this is the Kuttakara problem, we have a number n and this number can be expressed in two forms a x plus r a and b by plus r b. So, r a and r b are called as agras. So, if r a is greater than r b, a is called adhikagra hara and b is called unagra hara. Hara in the sense, so if you want to find out a x, you have to divide n by a 
and of course, R e and R b are the remainders. This is just to uh, get the terms clear. So, when we see the verse, so A and B are referred to as Adhikagrahara and Unagrahara respectively. So, the problem is to find out n x y given A R A B R B. So, this is the problem. So, we have uh, three unknowns and we have two equations and therefore, this forms an example of indeterminate equation of the first order. In fact, the algorithm which has been presented by Brahmagupta in three verses are far more clear than what has been discussed. The Arya Bhatta also discussed in two verses, but it was a bit terse and here we beautifully lays down the algorithm. So, Adhikagra Bhagaharat, Unagra Bhagaharitat, Shesham, Yatu Tatu Paraspara Bhaktam, Labdham, Adhodhaha, Prathaksthapyam. So, Adhodhaha Prathaksthapyam means one below the other we need to place. So, what is to be placed? So, Paraspara Hritam, quantities which are mutually divided, so they have to be placed one below the other. But then, where do we start with? So, he, he says Adhikagra Bhagaharat, Unagra Bhagahara. A is Adhikagra Bhagahara and Unagra Bhagahara. So, you start with A divided B and then you proceed. So, with the remainders, you keep on dividing and uh, all the quotients that you get are to be placed one below the other. Then comes, uh, in fact, uh, the term Mati was used by Aryabhata to find out a quantity at some stage of the division you stop and the remainder has to be multiplied by some quantity and then uh, the difference has to be added or subtracted. So, that this quantity is divisible by the previous remainder. So, this uh, has been very clearly stated here by Brahmagupta, Shesham Tatha Ishta Gunitam, he calls it as Ishta, so Aryabhata call it as Mati, Ishta Gunitam Yatha Agriyor Antarena Sanyuktam. Agra, as I was mentioning, refers to the remainder. Antara is difference, antarena sanyuktam. So, when it is added or subtracted, shudhyati. Shudhyati here means divides without any remainder. That is what is meant by shudhyati. Then he says that gunaka, so whichever is the multiplier, ishta has to be placed below. Labdhancha means this, uh, when this is divided, so whatever be the quotient that is called as labdhi, that also has to be placed and then so sthapyam upantya gunaha. So, how do we so having placed this valli one below the other. So, for instance, if we see this problem, so 2 1 1 1 2 4. So, 2 is the ishta and 4 is the labdhi. So, 2 1 1 1. So, these are the quotients and they are placed one below the other. What is to be done? So, that operation is described by Brahmagupta here very clearly and this operation was missing in Aryabhata's verses and it had to be supplied by the commentator Bhaskara. So, here, so he says labdhancha antyat upantya gunaha, upantya gunaha svordhve antya yutaha. See, so, 2 into 1 plus 4, so that has to be placed up, so that is 6. So, this is the kind of uh, description that Brahmagupta very clearly gives agrantaha hinagra cheda bhajitaha shesham. So, you go on and uh, adhikagra yutam bhavatyagram. So, this algorithm is more or less same which was explained while uh, this uh, Aryabhatiya was discussed. So, one or two things which uh, were not very clearly stated then. So, I will just supply those details and then I will move on to other topics. So, here, so let us choose the example 34 x plus 2 is equal to n and 13 y plus 10 is also equal to n. So, here of the two remainders, so this 10 is larger and therefore, 13 will be called as Adhikagra Bhagahara. So, 2 is smaller and therefore, it is called Unagra Bhagahara. So, you, so the prescription was, so Adhikagra Bhagahara had to be divided by Unagra Bhagahara. So, you divide this, the quotient is 0, keep that, so you get 13, so and then you divide by 34, here after it is a mutual division, so this is dividing this, you get 2 and uh, 8 is the remainder, so this divides, you get 1, so you get all the quotients. So, you arrange them in this order, one below the other, so after the quotient, so the last remainder is uh, 2 here, 
and at this stage what you need to do is, so you have to take a decision whether you have to add or subtract the difference of the remainders. So, the statement was it has to be added if it is even and it has to be subtracted if it is odd. So, the number of quotients here is even and therefore, so you have to find out this t we refer to as mati, here he calls it as ishta. So, the last remainder into t plus the difference of the remainders. So, this should be such that t is chosen such that, so this is divisible by the previous remainder. So, this is the prescription and obviously, t is equal to 2 satisfies and what we get is 12, once you get this 12, so you have to divide by 3 and the labdhi is 4 that is placed here, then it is just this. So, antyad upantya guna add to this you get 6, you complete the valley you reach here. So, having reached there, so the two numbers, one is called the Urdhva Rashi, Rashi is number, Urdhva Rashi, Adho Rashi. So, all that, that needs to be done is the Urdhva Rashi has to be taken and uh, that should be divided by this Unagra Bhagahara, fine. So, this 36 has to be divided by 34, the remainder is 2 and uh, this basically gives the see y. So, this into 2 plus 10 gives you 36. So, that is the desired number. So, it just happened that is 36. So, okay. One interesting thing that we need to do is uh, to observe that uh, this process can be terminated at whichever stage we like. So, in fact, the rationale uh, will be explained by Professor Shiram uh, and here the point that I want to make is, so this in this I have done the same problem and I have at this stage we stop in the previous thing. So, now I am just continuing one more division and what we get is remainder 1. In fact, Bhaskara prescribed that you can continue till 1, but this can be ter terminated at any stage. So, if you continue this till 1, so the number of quotient that you obtain is odd. So, therefore, here we have to subtract the difference in the remainders 10 and 2 is 8 and t has to be chosen again by the same principle and t is 10 and the labdhi is 1. So, you place this and what you get here is, so the numbers are different here, but again the same principle. So, you will be able to get the number 36. So, I do the other uh, operation. So, you stop before in the previous thing, so first I took with 2, then I added one more, here I just stop at 3 itself. So, you terminate at 3 and this becomes much simpler and the number of steps is less, so you get 36. So, the point is the mutual division can be terminated at any stage of the division and by choosing up, that is that in fact explains why it is called mati. So, you can make an intelligent choice at any point. So, the basic point is you have to reduce the magnitude of the numbers and at some stage if you are able to see that you will be able to get an appropriate mati, you can terminate the process and you can finish the problem. Okay. And uh, as I was mentioning the algorithm has been described by later people, so Mahavira, Bhaskara and so on and uh, the basic uh, thing which has been given by Aryabhata has been slightly modified by later people and various artifices have been invented by the later mathematicians, so which will be discussed in other lectures. So, with this, uh, with only one more observation, so I just uh, proceed further. So, this is something which is considered to be a landmark achievement in the field of pure mathematics, so solving uh, an indeterminate equation and clearly laying out an algorithm for doing so. So, this is one important thing to note. The other is, uh, so if one solution is obtained, so for instance if you look, look at this last point, so if you are able to find out x y is equal to alpha beta is one solution, then uh, x is alpha plus b m and y is beta plus a m is also a solution for any integer m. And therefore, if you have obtained one solution, you have obtained infinite number of solutions. Fine. Now, I move on to the second section of this Kotakara, wherein he discusses the Sankalana. So, Sankalana, Vyavakalana, Gunana, Harana. So, these are the four fundamental operations. 
Sankalana is addition, Yavakalana is subtraction, Gunana is multiplication and Harana is division. So, when we have quantities which are positive, negative and 0, so how do we conduct this 4 basic operations? So, how do we understand that? So, in fact, he has very clearly laid down. So, this has to be understood uh, and appreciated. So, thinking of the times in which this text has been composed. So, very, very clearly he gives out all the operations. Uh, so, let me give one or two uh, examples taking one or two verses and explain. So, the rest I uh, will leave it because we have to cover a few more things. So, for instance, the first verse of this section starts with the operation Sankalana. Brahmagupta says, Dhanayor Dhanam Rinam Rinayoho. So, Dhana is positive quantity, Rina is negative quantity, Dhanam. So, Dhanayor Dhanam, so when you have two positive quantities, you add them, you get positive, negative plus negative is negative, Rinam Rinayoho, Rinayoho when you deal with it, two Rinas, so the resultant will be Rina. Dhana Rinayoho Antaram, so when you have positive and negative, it can be positive or negative, then he says, so consider 0. So, Rinam Aikyancha Dhanam Rinam Dhana Shunya Yoho, Shunya is 0, so when you deal with 0, so positive plus 0 will be positive, negative plus 0 will be negative and finally, he says Shunya Yoho Shunyam. So, this will look so trivial to us, but uh, laying it down, so when things were not uh, formulated well, so is something which is very interesting. So, then Vyavakalana, so he devotes two verses. Unam adhikad vishodhyam dhanam. Unam is smaller quantity. So, adhika so is larger. So, unam adhikad vishodhyam. Adhikat when you have a much larger quantity and you subtract a smaller one, what you will get is positive. So, negative minus negative will be negative. And then, so he goes on shunya vihinam rinam rinam. So, shunya is 0. Rinam a negative quantity. So, Shunya Vihinam, so what you will have is Rinam and Shunya Vihinam Dhanam, so you will have Dhanam positive and Shunyam Akasham, see <laughs> Akasha as I was telling in Bhuta Sankhya refers to space and all synonyms will be employed to refer to 0. So, Kham, Shunyam, Akasham all will be employed. So, Shunya minus Shunya will be Shunya. So, then Shodhyam yada dhanam rinatu. Dhanam is positive quantity. Rinatu, if you want to subtract, what you will get is rinam. So, and rinam dhanadva. So, all that has been, all cases have been dealt with in great detail. Then, the gunana rinam rinam dhanayoho ghataha. Dhanam Rinayoho. So, Rina is negative, Rinayoho see, is uh, if you have negative into negative, so that will be positive. See, Dhanam will be the resultant if you deal with two negatives. So, here it is Gunana. So, all those things have been stated, and uh, so if you look at this last part of this verse, Khashunyorva Vadhaha Shunyam. See, Kham is 0 and uh, shunya is also 0. So, he says kha shunyoho vadhaha 0 into 0 is 0. Then the last part. So, harana, so dhana bhaktam dhanam rina hritam rinam. So, dhana bhaktam dhanam, see dhanam. So, dhana is positive. So, dhana bhakta positive, oh I made a mistake here, positive by positive should be positive here. Okay. So, so then negative by negative, so that is positive again. So, 0 by 0, so this also he has defined as kham kabhaktam kham. So, this we know today is undefined, but it has been defined as 0. 
so bhaktam runena dhanam so positive by negative so negative by positive so all that has been stated so then khodhritam runam dhanam va tachchedam this is a very important thing so he introduces a term called tachcheda so cheda is division so when zero becomes the divisor tachchedam means it refers to a quantity wherein we find the divisor to be zero tat here refers to zero so it should be a bahuvrihi compound tat chedam yasya so for which zero is the divisor so he has introduced the term called tachcheda and uh, so the other part is zero is the numerator and any other quantity is the denominator that also has been stated to be tachcheda so so with this he basically describes all the uh, operations which can be done with positive negative and zero then this karani refers to cert so operations with certs this also he discusses in great detail i'll give only one example here istodhruta karani padayuti hi so this suppose you want to add or subtract two certs so he gives a interesting method he says istena udhruta means you can divide it by some choice so which will make the operation convenient to you so istena udhruta so divided by this padam is square root yuti is add so you have two numbers so ab whose square root has to be added or subtracted so you divide by this and then he says take the square of that and then multiplied ishta gunita this quantity c whichever you chose you multiply and then take the whole square root so this is what has been stated antara kritirva so and this will give you the difference or sum of the two thirds so there are a few more verses so which deal with the square roots then i move on to the ekavarna and anekavarna samikarana so the general principle is laid out by brahmagupta in the very first verse of this section he says avyaktantara bhaktam vyastam rupantaram same avyaktah so suppose you have an equation of this form so ax plus b is equal to bx plus d so this uh, coefficient so i said x is avyakta so vyakta is something whose form is known sometimes he uses the word rupa sometimes he uses the word vyakta so rupa means actually a constant so whose form is known see so in contrast with avyakta so whose value is unmanifest rupa is manifest form which actually refers to the constant so for instance d and c will be called as rupa so that is why he says rupantaram the difference of the two rupas so d minus c so vyastam in the sense so this has to be taken the other order okay so d minus c it is in this sense he uses the word vyastam so avyaktantara is a minus b so the coefficient of the unknown quantity is also referred to as avyakta that's why i was saying so this in the verse avyaktantara refers to the difference between the coefficients of the unknown quantities a minus b bhaktam is divided what is to be divided the rupantara so that gives the avyakta same here refers to when you want to find uh, equate this and then obtain the solution same okay samikarane that's what it means then when you deal with quadratic Brahma Gupta gives you this. Varga chatur gunita naam. Before he moves on to the examples, he lays down the principles. So what is to be done? That is very interesting here. Varga chatur gunita naam rupa naam. So suppose you consider an equation like this. So a x square plus b x plus uh, we usually say c. So he says he puts it on the other side. So this is the general way in which these things have been handled. So if you look at the procedure. that has been laid down so you take rupa to one side and uh, the unknowns on one side so and then handle this so this c is referred to as rupa so varga chatur gunitanam rupanam see 
So, this varga here refers to the coefficient of x square. Okay. So, chatur gunita is multiplied by 4 rupa. So, what you get is basically 4 ac. So, varga chatur gunita nam rupa nam madhya varga sahita nam. See, madhya is this middle term. So, varga is square, sahita is this. So, 4 ac plus b square. Moolam, so you have to take the square root, madhyena vunam, so again minus b. So, vargo dhritam, see varga diguno dhritam, see varga here again refers to a, diguno dhritam by 2. So, this is basically the formula minus b plus minus, so that is which uh, we, so here, so it has been stated it in this particular forum and having laid down this, he gives a few examples. Dhyunam adhika masa sesham, adhimasa sesham, trihritam sapta adhikam, dvisangunitam, adhimasa sesha tulyam yada tada yugagatam kathaya. So, this is a very uh, common problem which one encounters in astronomy. So, this concept of adhika masa, so which some of you would be familiar with, so we have to, when we match this lunar and solar calendar, so the number of uh, days which will be constituted by 12 lunar months, so will be falling short by about 11 days in a year and therefore, so every 2 and 3 fourth of a year we introduce a on an average adhika masa. So, it is a certain problem connected with that, so in that context he says adhimasa shesham, shesham means the remainder of a particular adhika masa in a year, adhimasa shesham, so he says dhyunam, dhyunam means dvi unam. So, remove 2 x minus 2, 3 hritam divided by 3, sapta adhikam, so plus 7, dvisangunitam multiplied, so adhimasa shesha tulyam, so that itself is x, so what you get, so is, so this is an example of ekavarna samikarana. So, one more uh, for anekavarna, see in fact this is second order of ekavarna, so that is first order. Here again he says adhimasa shesha padat. So, pada is one fourth. So, adhimasa shesha padat. So, triunat minus three. Vargaha square adhimasa shesha samam it should be. So, this is what it is. Avama shesha taha va avama shesha samaha kada bhavati. So, how will you get? So, uh, again we have a sort of quadratic and for which the solution is this. So, one will choose 36. So, that is from certain other considerations. Now, I discuss this uh, anekavarna. So, you have uh, two variables. So, we started with ekavarna samikarana, linear quadratic, now anekavarna samikarana. So, this again I just illustrate with one example gata bhagana yutad juganat. Tachesha yuta, tadaike sanyuta, tadyoga, jugunamva, yah kathayati, kuttakajnya saha. So, this problem will boil down to sort of kuttaka, but then, so it is presented in a context uh, of finding the number of uh, revolutions made by a planet in a given period and hence getting longitude. So, here, so that is how it is posed. Suppose you have a very large period. And this large period we call it civil days. So, in fact, Brahma Gupta considers a period of Kalpa. So, Kalpa is 1000 times Mahayuga, 1000 times 43,20,000 years. So, he presents huge numbers. So, what is the number of revolutions made by planet in this large period? So, that is how uh, uh, he goes about computing the planetary positions. So, suppose n, a refer to the number of revolutions made by the planet in the total number of days in a kalpa. So, if n prime refers to the fraction of revolutions in a certain period called ahargana. So, ahargana is basically the count of days, you start at a given period. So, in this period this was the position from this, so in ahargana, so how many number of revolutions have been made, it could be a fractional number. So, obviously by rule of 3 you will get n prime is a times n by a. So, this will be having an integer part and a fraction. So, you try to express it as this, where n refers to the integral number of revolutions. Okay. So, this is x by a and uh, you add a on both sides. 
and you get an equation of this form. So, this is a, a Kuttakara problem. So, if one is able to get, so then he says he is a Kuttakajna. Then Bhavita problem. So, Bhavita as I was mentioning refers to the product of two unknowns. Here he lays down the rule first. Bhavitaka rupa gunana sa avyakta vadha ishta bhajita ishta ptyoho alpe adhikaha adhike alpaha kshepyaha bhavita hurtau vyastam. So, suppose we have an equation of this form. So, where this coefficient of the product of x y is referred to as bhavita. So, recall the term rupa refers to the constant. So, what he says is bhavitaka rupa gunana, gunana is multiplication, take product of A and D. So, bhavitaka rupa gunana, so avyakta vadha. So, here x is avyakta, y is also avyakta and uh, the coefficients are also referred to as avyaktas. So, avyakta vadha is product of avyaktas, so b and c. So, then what is to be done? See, if you look at the first half of the verse, bhavitaka rupa gunana, so avyakta vadha b c, ishta bhajita, so means divided by ishta. See, the point is, so you want to find out solution, so the prescription is the following. So, you take the coefficients which are known, so take the product and divide by some number ishta. Okay. Ishta aptyoho, apti means whatever you get as the quotient. So, ishta, ishta aptyoho of the two numbers q and m. So, adhike alpaha alpe adhikaha. So, that is what he is saying. So, you have to basically add this to this and this to this. So, q and c have to be added to b and c. So, depending upon which is smaller and which is larger and bhavita hrtau. So, if you divide by a, you will get the required x and y. So, basically the principle that goes is the following. See, so if you look at this, see x is, so finally c plus m by a and y is b plus q by a or it is the other way. So, depending upon how you choose. See, basically this problem can be rewritten in this way and once you rewrite, you get an equation of this form and uh, this he writes it as, so q times m. So, this is all he does and then, so basically adding you will get your x and y. So, an example, so he says bhano ho rashyam shavadhat trichadar gunitat vishodhya rashyam saan. So, navatim drishtva suryam kurvan avatsarat ganakaha. So, this phrase avatsarat ganakaha is an interesting phrase. Ganakaha means a mathematician. So, avatsara, you know what? Aang, aang maryada vidyo. <laughs> so, this is how the sutra goes. If you have a, so avatsarat. So, even if a fellow were to do this problem for one year and if he completes, then I would call him mathematician. So, it is in this sense, I mean, the kind of uh, exuberant statement when uh, algebra was in its initial phase. So, this is how in most of the examples he says, avatsarat ganakaha. Anyway, what he says is bhanoho rashyam savadhat. So, bhanoho rashi refers to 30 degree segment, amsha is degrees. So, 30 degree is called as rashis, amsha is degrees. So, bhanoho related to sun, rashyam savadhat. So, these are the two quantities x and y. So, one is rashi, y is uh, amsha. Okay. Rashyam savadhat. So, x y take the product. Trichatur gunitan vishodhya rashyam san. See, so trichatuhu. So, 3 and 4 gunitan multiplied, one is rashi, the other is amsha. Vishodhya having subtracted navatim. So, if this is equal to 90. Now, from this, you have to obtain what is the actual position. Okay. So, that is what he says. Suryam kurvan, if one is able to tell what sun is. So, then this is the problem and one can show that one gets x is 10 and y is 20. So, this is an example of bhavita problem. Now, I come to the most important uh, part 
of this chapter, so which is almost the last 30 verses, the first 30 verses were Kottaka, so and then we had this uh, dealing with surge and then operations and then uh, Ekavarna Samikarana, Anekavarna Samikarana, Bhavita, then he goes on to Varga Prakriti. So Varga Prakriti refers to the second order indeterminate equation. So an equation of this form is known as Varga Prakriti, so x square minus dy square. So given d and k, so we need to find x and y, so which are integers. So later uh, Bhaskara has very clearly stated the terminology, so Jeshtha Moola, Kanishtha Moola, but Brahma Gupta does not call them as Jeshtha and Kanishtha in the verses which prescribe this, but we just take it, this will be convenient uh, when we see Bhaskara also later during the uh, lectures later. So here, uh, so this problem gives rise to this kind of inequality, so the one can show that this one of the motivations of solving this problem is to obtain the value of root d, so uh, successive approximations of root d can be obtained using the Bhavana principle which has been given by Brahma Gupta. So we will demonstrate with a few examples. But then, so just keep this in mind, so this is an inequality which will be satisfied root d, see you can, you can see that if x and y are large and suppose k is equal to 1, so then, so immediately you can uh, get as a first approximation, so root d is equal to, so y by x, okay. so x by y, root d is x by y, so this straight away you will get this. So root d uh, my, uh, minus x by y is less than 1 by 2 x y and that is less than 1 by 2 y square. In fact, we will show little later uh, or perhaps in the next lecture that the approximation which has been given for root 2 in the Sula Sutra text, so which we discussed much earlier. So, this approximation which was given can be straight away obtained using this. So, this is not to mention that uh, this was the approach taken by Sulvakaras, but it is a very interesting way of obtaining this approximation. So this set of verses basically describe three important things. So one is <laughs> defining the Varga Prakriti equation and then so defining the second, the second and the third line actually give the Bhavana principle and of course a special case in the third when k is equal to 1, the fourth line basically gives that. So let us uh, try to uh, understand the terms employed in this verse. So in fact, uh, if we consider x1 by 1 and uh, x2 by 2 which satisfy equations with this shapas k1 k2 are called as shapas see so d is called prakriti k is called shapa suppose you have an equation which satisfies this so given d and k1 you obtain x1 y1 so given d and k2 you obtain x2 y2 so we have these two equations then so what is stated here is so this equation will be satisfied and that is what has been stated in the second and third lines which you find here. See Adya Vadhaha Gunaka Gunaha, so in fact Brahma Gupta here uses the word Gunaka and Guna is multiplication, Gunaka Guna, so this Prakriti is the word which has been generally used and here he has used the word Gunaka to refer to D. So, Adya here refers to this y1 by 2, okay. so we have two equations, so y1 is also Adya and y2 is also Adya, Adya Vadha refers to the product of y1 and y2, the product of y1 and y2 multiplied by Gunaka, so this is the equation which has been stated, so d times y1 by 2, Saha Antya Ghatena, so y is referred to as Adya and x is referred to as antya. So antya ghata is product of antyas, so x1, x2. So x1 is 
So saha means added to that. See, so x1, x2 plus dy1, y2. Then he says vajra vadhaikyam. This vajra vadha basically refers to cross multiplication. Suppose you have two equations, x1, y2, y2, x1. This is referred to as vajra vadha. So that's what he says. Vajra vadhaikyam. So prathamam prakshepaha kshepa vadhatulya. So he also kshepa. See k1 and k2. Kshepa vadha is product of that. So this equation is satisfied. So this one can straight away see. This is what is basically bhavana principle. Fine. So having stated the bhavana principle, then you take a particular case. So suppose you have x1 is equal to x2, y1 is equal to y2. So which means you are doing bhavana of the same equation with itself. So if you do that, then you will get an equation of this form, and that is what is stated here. And if one finds a solution to this, see suppose you find one solution which satisfies this equation x square minus dy square is equal to 1, then by bhavana principle, see what is most important to understand here is by employing this bhavana principle, you can move from x y to x square plus dy square and 2 x y. So, if one solution x y is known, so then all that Brahmagupta has proved is, so you have this if you do this also satisfies this equation and as a particular case what one gets is 2 x y and x square plus d y d y square and you get infinite number of solutions. So, this is the most important aspect of Bhavana principle and using this principle one will be able to get successive values of root d. Brahmagupta also presents some uh, other cases wherein k is minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 4. So, all that has been stated by Brahmagupta. Here, so this will be straightforward in certain examples. So, you can uh, simply guess x and y such that this equation is satisfied. And once you know one solution, then you can keep on generating infinite number of solutions by using this bhavana principle. So, if you do not, so if uh, while solving a certain problem in fact, uh, which will be discussed in great detail by Professor Srinivas later. So, if at a certain case, uh, certain stage of the problem, so you get uh, k is equal to minus 1 plus minus 2 plus minus 4, then also you will be immediately uh, able to solve the problem and uh, this particular cases have been stated down what will be the x y values. So, have also been laid down by Brahma Gupta. I take uh, a couple of more minutes. So, to present an example of this Bhavana principle. So, which has been given by Brahma Gupta himself. So, after stating this uh, Moolam Dvidheshta Vargat Gunaka Gunat Ishta Yuta Vihinacha. So, this is how the uh, section on Varga Prakriti commences. Okay. Prakriti is the word which refers to D, but the Brahma Gupta uses the word Gunaka here, and uh, this has been said as Varga Prakriti. So, Bhaskaras uh, versus they use the word Prakriti. So, it is Varga is basically the second order equation, so square and therefore it is referred to as Varga Prakriti. After presenting this, uh, what is Varga Prakriti equation and what is Bhavana principle and this particular case. So, and then, so how to find out, so even when k is not equal to 1, immediately jump into the solution. So, after presenting what are the values of uh, x1, y1, so which will lead you to the solution, so he takes a example. Rashikala Shesha Kritim Dinavati Gunitam Trishiti Gunitam Va Saikam Nyadine Vargam Kurvan Avatsarad Ganakaha Rashi Kala. So Rashi refers to 30 degrees and Kala is seconds. 
So, Kala refers to second, Vikala, uh, sorry, Kala is minutes, Vikala is seconds. So, Rashi, Amsha, Kala, Vikala. So, this is how it goes 30 degrees, degree, minutes, and seconds. So, Rashi Kala, Shesha Kritim. See, Kriti is used to refer to square here. So, Kriti, so we will have instance to discuss on this uh, later when we discuss this Bakshali manuscript also. So, in colloquial language, Kriti actually refers to one's own work. See, our Dikshitar Kriti, when you say composition of Dikshita. Okay. So, Kriti in mostly it is used to refer to square in many of these mathematical texts and uh, Rashi Kala Shesha Kritim. So, Kriti square of, so two things, one is Rashi, the other is Kala. Okay. Dvinavati Gunitam, Dvinavati is 92, okay. Kala Shesha Kritim Dvinavati Gunitam or Trashiti Gunitam Va, you can take D to be 83. So, either 92 or 83, Saikam, so that uh, quantity k is 1. Okay. So, Nyadine Vargam Kurvan Avat Sarad Ganakaha. See. So, let us take uh, first equation and here, so you can straight away see that 10 and 1. So, x is 10 and y is 1, you will get 8. So, now use the Bhavana. So, recall, so according to Bhavana principle, so if x y is a solution, then x square plus d y square and 2 x y is also a solution. So, this is the Bhavana principle, straight away you can find out and convince yourself that. So, here, so 10 square plus 92 into 1 square, so this is the new x and this is the new y, okay, 2 x y, 2 times x y. So, this moves to this also is a solution. And if you do this and then you divide both these sides by 64, you get an equation of this form. Here d is 92, that is what the that is the example that we are doing. So, 24 square minus 92 into 5 by 2 square, so is equal to 1. So, this is like x square minus d y square is equal to 1. So, once again do the bhavana x goes to x square plus d times y square, so that is what it is and uh, y goes to 2 x y, 2 times x y and uh, you have this equation. So, in the other problem, so this you have basically reduced this and you can further keep on doing and all this will basically give you better and better approximations to root d. So, 1151 by 120 will be an approximate value of 92, root d, root of 92 will be this ratio. If you do bhavana once more with itself, so you will get better and better approximations. Similarly, so if you choose the d equals 83, so then you have straight away you can see that so, it is not necessary that k has to be always uh, positive, so you can uh, choose anything and uh, so we get 9 square minus 83 into 1 is minus 2 and uh, doing bhavana of this with itself, so gives you this. So, which when you divide by 2, so, so actually 2 square, so you can uh, divide and you will get an equation of this form. So, this is x square minus d times y square is 1 straight away. So, you can keep on doing bhavana and uh, you will be able to get better and better approximations for root d. So, with this uh, we stop our discussion on Brahmagupta, we will continue with one or two more examples and then we will proceed to Bakshali manuscript in the next lecture. Thank you.